السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ و لاخلی و صاب ہی اجمعین اما بعد قال تعالی فی کلام المجید ولا نبل و نقم بشی من الخوف ولجو و نقص من الاموال و الفسی و الفسی و ثمرات و فبش صابرین رب شرح علی صدری و یسر علی عمری واہل القدم السانی افقہ قولی My dear brothers and sisters, we all have gathered here today for a very important session on dealing with stress and worry. We know that Allah Rabbil Alameen has created us and has sent us in this world as a test, as a trial. And Allah Rabbil Alameen has said in the Quran in Surah, Surah Al-Anbiya, Surah number 21, verse number 35, Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every soul shall have the taste of death. When Ablu kum bi sharri wal khairi fitna, and I will test you with shar evil, wal khair good, as a trial. Allah Rabbil Alamin has told us in the Quran that He will surely test us. This life surely has trials and tests. Bi sharri wal khairi fitna, as with difficulties. Shar mean means those things which we think to be bad. In reality, it is good or bad, Allah alone knows. Bil shari wal khairi fitna, and with good as a trial. And then Allah says, Wa ilayna turjaoon, and you will return back to me. My dear brothers and sisters, this life is a place where all of us go through various kind of trials, difficulties, different, different type of examinations. In Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, verse number 155, Allah Ta'ala has said, Wa la nablu wa nakum bi shayi min al khawf. I will surely test you with something of fear. Wal ju hunger, wa naqsi min al amwal loss of property, loss of goods, things, amwal. Wal anfusi wa thamarat loss of lives. Wa thamarat loss of the fruits of your toil. You worked very hard, but you don't get results. Allah says, I will test you. Then Allah says, Fabash shiris sabrin. Give good news to those who have sabr. We all are living in this world, whether we like it or whether we don't like it, whether we want or we don't want. We all have to go through the ups and downs of life. This is a part of life. We all have to face life. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, what is the way wherein a person, in spite of these difficulties, doesn't break down? He comes out strong. and successful with the right attitude with the right way of looking at the world who will tell us the one who created us allah is the one who created us he knows what is good for us and what is bad for us he knows he is al khabir the one who is all aware he is al alim the all knowing al hakim the all wise allah knows what is good for us and for this reason we all have to look at allah taala for guidance Now I'm going to share with you ten practical points from the Quran and the Sunnah. Such points, which if any one of us implements in his life, we are sure that there are results because these are from Allah Taala. These points are mentioned to us in the Quran in by the sayings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we are sure about the results. Ten such points by which. It won't happen that you won't get problems, but in spite of problems, how does a person not get troubled? Troubles will be there, but how you don't get troubled? See, problems are one thing, troubles are one thing, but getting troubled is another thing. We see the biggest and the toughest exam was of whom? Whom does Allah test the most? Whom does Allah test the most? Who had the toughest exam? The prophets. The toughest exam was for the prophets, as given in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, that Allah Rabbil Alamin gave the toughest, the most difficult trials to the prophets. Then those like them, then those like them, a person is tested according to his iman. Now many people, when they hear this, they say, and some people don't say openly, but they think about this. They say, see, if we have strong iman. 
if we get too much, very strong Iman, we will have more trials. They say if you have higher Iman, and it's true, the higher the Iman, the more the trials, the more the difficulties. So people say, no, 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 we don't want too much Iman. We have lesser Iman, we have less difficulty, less trials. So we have lesser Iman, it's better for us, they say. Or they think like this. But is this correct? Audhu Billah. This is not correct. Why is it not correct? The answer is in the words that troubles are one thing, getting troubled is another thing. We find that trials, the toughest trials was for the prophets, no doubt about it. But we find that they didn't get troubled. They didn't get troubled. We find our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the toughest exam was for our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Look at his life. He is born and often. His father has already died. He is six years old, his mother dies. He becomes eight years old, his grandfather who is taking care of him, he also dies. We find that the first abuses, the first bad words he had to listen was from his own people. A man of truth, a man of honesty, when he has to hear these things, it really pains. You look at his life, all of his sons, they died in, in, in childhood, infancy. All of his sons. You ask someone whose father, son has died, who has anyone who has seen the death of a child, how it feels on the father. We find that the Prophet ﷺ, his daughters were divorced because of Islam. They were divorced. You ask a, a father whose daughter has been divorced and see what, what, is, what, uh, what, you know, what tr troubles they go through. We find the Prophet ﷺ had all the difficulties in Makkah. Finally, we, we see that the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina. Over there, the problem of the Jews and their treachery and their planning. We find the problems of the problem of the hypocrites. We find the Prophet ﷺ, he had to go through the trials. For example, his own wife, his own wife, people spoke badly about her. Aisha Radilan, the most beloved wife. So all of these trials, all of these problems and difficulties, but yet we see that our Prophet ﷺ is the person who was ranked number one in the list of the most influential persons in history by Michael H. Hart. How? We find that he did not become a reactionary. He gave the people of the world the religion of truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the key? My dear brothers, my dear sisters, the key is in the fact that when a person has iman, even with big, big troubles, you don't feel troubled. If you have strong iman, the stronger the iman, even with troubles, you don't get troubled. For example, if one of us gets a cold, you get a cold, you say, I just got a, I have, I have just a cold. It's just a cold. But if a person has some kind of a life-threatening life disease, some kind of organ failure, some kind of a very severe problem, if he gets a cold, then it's a severe problem. So when you have strong Iman, even with difficulties, even with troubles, a person doesn't feel troubled. There are several evidences for this, from the Quran and the Sunnah. But if you have weak Iman, if any one of us has weak Iman, even with the slightest problems, a person is troubled. You look at so many cases, a person committed suicide, why? I, my heart cause was broken in love, they say. So that's cause for doing suicide for so many people. Why? When you have less Iman, loss in business, so he has gone to do suicide. If you have less Iman, even one problem is enough to drive a person to desperation. But when we have strong Iman, even with big, big problems, a person doesn't feel troubled. Like it's like, you know, a heavyweight champion, a heavyweight weightlifter. He lifts up heavy weights and he puts it down, no problem at all. But if you give that weight to one of us, maybe we'll end up in the hospital. So we see when, when the people are strong, they have strong Iman. Even with troubles, you don't get troubled. So this is the key in understanding this question. Now, my dear brothers, we find when we look around in the world, the World Health Organization tells us every two seconds, one person in this world is trying to do suicide. Attempts suicide every two seconds. Two seconds have passed, one person attempted suicide. Another two seconds, another person attempted suicide in the world. But it's also surprising, the same report tells us every 39 seconds, one person, he dies due to suicide. When 20 people attempt suicide, only one dies. 20 people attempt suicide, one die, dies and 19 don't die only. Why? Because their time of death had not come. 
As people say, no, I will take my life. You can't take your life. You will die only when Allah has decreed that you should die, when Allah has willed that we should die, and we will die only at that time, and that one person who died, even if he would have not done suicide, he would have died. He died a haram death, he could have died a, a different death. Now, there are people who attempt suicide, there are people who don't do suicide, but they suffer internally. They have problem of blood pressure, they get heart diseases due to psychological problems, due to the stress and worry, troubles. So there are so many people who develop several diseases. There are so many people who take another way. They become reactionaries. If you read the biography and stories of gons, criminals, many of them they say, I was trying to get a job. I tried to get a job, but when I didn't get a job, so I said, now I will take the path of crime. This is the story of so many people who were trying to do something good. They went in for difficulties and problems and then they took the haram path. So many people, they start troubling others because they are themselves troubled. So they trouble others. This is the path of reaction. On the other hand, we find some people are depressed. There are some people going through psychological stress problems. Some people remove that problem on someone else. You will find a person who is troubled in office, he goes and fights with his wife. Or someone who's troubled with his wife, he goes and fire, fires his junior. So we find so many people that happens, this happens. But my brothers and sisters, we will we need to see what is the way wherein a person doesn't get troubled in spite of troubles. For example, you will see in the Quran, Allah Rabbul Alameen has told us on the day of judgment, in the Akhirah, Allah will tell the pious, righteous people, Allah will tell them, it will be told, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutmainna. O soul who is in tranquility. O soul who is in tranquility. It's not said, O troubled person. O troubled soul. The, the most, the toughest exam was for the prophets, for the righteous people, for the good people, and the easiest was for those people who have less iman. But we find that in spite of the toughest of exam, these people are nafsul mutmainna. Are souls of tranquility, of peace. They have sukoon. How do they get this? We need to know. And it's there in the Quran and the Sunnah. I want to share with you 10 points. And my dear brothers and sisters, if you are with me in these 10 points, if you are with me while I revise, inshallah by the time we go, I hope that most of you will know at least, if not 10, at least close to 10, somewhere close to 10. But you have to be with me when I revise. And if there is a person over here who says, no, no, I'm not going to get troubled. There are some people who would say, I don't have any troubles and I'm not going to get any trouble. If you think that you, you're not going to get any trouble in life, no problems in life, no worry, then this lecture is not for you. It is for every single person who has to go through trials and difficulties and maybe there's someone here who's already sitting with troubles in his mind, who's already thinking, yes, I have so many problems in life. So now, if you think that you, this is not for you, that you are a person who's not going to get trouble, so don't revise. Then don't, don't pay attention. But otherwise, for every one of us, it is important, this is very important, because these are real things which is there in the Quran, which is there in the Sunnah. Let us look at it. Let's start. Point number one. Point number one is Iman. Is Iman. And we have a, a hadith in Sahih al jami where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that man kanatil, as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, man asabahu hamun, aw gamun, aw saqamun, aw shiddah, the person who have goes through some worry or some grief or sakamun, some sickness or shiddah, any kind of difficulty. And he says, Allah, Allah, Rabbi, la ushiku bihi shay. Allah, Allah, He is my Lord. I don't join any partners with Him. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, kashafa anhu dalika. Allah will solve His problem for him. Just him saying this, Allah, Allah, Rabbi, la ushiku bihi shay. How? How is it? The fact is, Allah, Rabbul Alameen, is the controller of this universe. Allah knows, we don't know. Allah, Rabbul Alameen, is the one who tests us. He is the one who controls every single leaf. When a person has his connection with Allah, when he has his iman in Allah, so Allah, Rabbul Alameen, takes care of his problems. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, Surah 16, verse 97. Allah says, Whoever does good deeds, min dhakarin aw untha, 
with a male or female wahua momin provided he is a momin provided he is a momin he has iman allah says falanuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba allah will give him a very beautiful life allah will give him hayatan tayyiba a beautiful life wala najziyannahum ajrahum bihasani ma kanu yamalun and allah will recompense him according to the best of his deeds now in this verse of the quran we find the scholars of tafsir they tell us that there are two distinct rewards mentioned in this verse of the quran the first reward which is mentioned is that allah rabbul alamin will give him hayatan tayyiba hayatan tayyiba a very beautiful life and then allah says wala najziyannahum ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'malun i will give him his recompense according to the best of his deeds so scholars of tafsir have pointed out that this first reward hayatan tayyiba which is mentioned is in this dunya a beautiful life allah will give hayatan tayyiba is in this dunya and allah will give recompensation this is akhira so hayatan tayyiba allah has promised if we do good deeds and we have iman so now iman is the key for getting hayatan tayyiba that beautiful life where a person lives with sukoon with a heart filled with tranquility and when he goes before allah he also gets a great reward in akhira that recompensation is also there there's a hadith recorded in sahih muslim our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ajab al amr al mu'min how strange is the matter of a mu'min of a believer a believer who believes in allah how strange is his matter allah says prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ajab al amr al mu'min inna amrahu kullahu khair in everything there is good for him in everything there is good for him in asabat hu sarra if happiness comes to him shakar fa kana khaira lahu he thanks allah this is good for him ho in asabat hu darra if troubles come to him sabara fa kana khaira lahu he has patience and that is also good for him what is allah's rasul muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us if difficulties come to him he has sabr if good comes to him he does shukr do you know what people do when good comes to them when good comes to them when they get money when they get famous when they get name fame car good if they get something good in this world they become arrogant so is that good thing really good for them it's not good for them because that good thing led him to that arrogance and that arrogance which even takes a person to kufr so now that good thing which he thought is good for him was actually bad for him but for a believer when good comes to him shakara fa kana khaira lahu he thanks allah alhamdulillah he thanks allah and he that is good for him that good thing is also good for him he has the wealth of this world maybe goodness of this world and that is also good for him it's not defeating him but that's not for someone other than a believer for a believer this is a true believer and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when asabat hu darra if troubles come on him sabra fa kana khaira lahu he does sabra and that is also good for him so my dear brothers we find that there are people in this world today who say i don't believe in god it is seen that these kind of people they are the first person to break down because they are alone whatever problem you have you have to fight alone but if we realize that i am facing this problem but i have with me rabbul alamin the lord of of alamin all the worlds then you are strong alhamdulillah you can feel that strength alhamdulillah i am not alone my lord is with me as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to abu bakr radhiyallahu that Allah is with us. Allah is with us. He said in the in the cave that He is with us. Allah is with us, and that is a sukoon. That is a sukoon. You look at Musa alayhi salam before the Red Sea, and Pharaoh is coming from behind with his army. A person with that kind of reputation as Pharaoh, and these people who were running away, he was not going to leave them. And the Bani Israel said. Musa inna la mudrakun Musa now we are caught what will we do the sea is before me and Pharaoh is behind us what did Musa alayhi salam say kalla ma ya rabbi sayadi no my lord is with me he will guide me he will guide me now that is the sukoon you get that Musa alayhi salam in this kind of a situation which would normally cause a lot of tension to anyone that Pharaoh is coming from behind you to kill you and there's a red sea in front of you but Musa alayhi salam has the yaqeen that kalla ma ya rabbi sayadi so my dear brothers The Lord of Musa, the Lord of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is our Lord. He is for us, and if we don't leave him, he doesn't leave us. If we leave him, then he leaves us. So don't leave him, my dear brothers. This is the first point, and for our entire lives, 
that keep Allah Rabbil Alameen with you. Allah is there with us. And when Allah is there, problems are, they, they are problems, are what? We find that the, the size of the problem reduces. But what's the problem, do you know, my brothers? So many people, when they are in difficulty, they start thinking wrong thoughts about Allah. They are in problems, they start thinking wrong thoughts about Allah. Very factually. Nauzubillah, they say that Allah is not doing good with me. Say, Allah is not doing good with me. What, what are, you, are you going to teach Allah what is good and bad? Are we going to teach Allah that Allah this is good, this is bad? No, He knows what is good and what is bad. Allah knows. We don't know. Allah knows what is good for us, what is bad for us. So we have to trust someone. We trust our creator who created us. One of the names of Allah is Al-Bar. Al-Bar. And you know, meaning of, you know the meaning of Al-Bar? Al-Bar is the one who does good. Allah does only good. He doesn't do bad. He does only good. Now we see that my hand is fractured, how can this be good for me? It is good. If you are a believer, it's good. How is it good? There is so much goodness in us, we don't even know. When Allah has decreed something is good, it is good. You lost a job, you are without a job, you are going door to door, seeking uh, interview to interview, seeking a job. Is it good for me? Yes, it is good. Allah said, Allah has done, have trust in Him, have faith in Him. You seek from Allah Ta'ala. But no problem, don't think wrong thoughts about Allah. What happens with us many a times, a person lost a job, then after some time he got a job which is far more paying, far more rewarding, much better job. Then he says, it was good, I lost that job. So we have very small vision. We can see something very small before us. We can't see what is beyond that. And Allah knows. So where people go wrong is they think wrong thoughts about Allah Ta'ala. We have to never, 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 ever think wrong thoughts about Allah. My dear brothers, he will listening to a dars from the Quran and the Sunnah. Let us listen with our hearts open. Let us tune ourselves to this. Whatever happens to me, I am not going to think anything bad about Allah. As Allah says in the Quran in Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, verse 51, the slaves of Allah are those who say, لَن يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَهُوَ مَوْلَانَا Slaves of Allah are those who say, nothing happens to us except what Allah has decreed for us. He is our Lord. He is our Lord. So, don't think bad thoughts about Allah Ta'ala. This is the first rule for fighting stress, for fighting worry, for fighting problems in life. What's the first rule? Think only good. Belief in Allah and having good thoughts about Allah. This is very important. Because Allah does with us what we think about Him. Remember this. He's the controller. Allah Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu said, Allah has said, this is a hadith of Qudasi in Sahih Bukhari. He said, Ana in the zanni abdi bi. I do with my slave what he thinks about me. What he thinks about me, I do that with him. In zanna bi khairan falahu, if he thinks good about me, I do good with him. When zanna bi sharran falahu, if he thinks bad about me, then that is for him. So now a person saying Allah is not doing good, he will not do good for you now. You, you, you don't deserve it now. Allah Akbar. We, we by our own actions and our thoughts become deserving of the punishment of Allah Ta'ala. And ana in the zanni abdi bi, I do with my slave as he thinks about me. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the first rule. Belief in Allah and having good thoughts about Allah Ta'ala. And I'll just go on to the next point by giving one last example. For example, if someone was to call you and tell you, see so and so, you need to give me so much money, otherwise we will shoot you. Extortion call. Now obviously any normal person will get tension. You're worried. You have got an extortion call. But if the next call is by the police commissioner, he says, don't worry, we have come to know this, we will find that person, we will make sure nothing happens to you, don't worry, my men are there. It's, it's, it's comforting, isn't it? But instead of that police commissioner, if some normal policeman in your lane, he was to tell you, don't worry, I'm there. Now, the tension that reduced after getting the call from the commissioner of police, and the difference when a police uh, a havaldar is possibly telling you in your lane, would be very different. It shows us that the higher the person in rank whom you are trusting, the lesser the tension. The bigger the person, the lesser the tension. So we are talking of Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the Alameen worlds, the Malikul Mulk, the real king, the king of kings, Allah Ta'ala. When you live on him, my dear brothers, Allah Rabbul Alameen is enough. So this is the first point, Iman in Allah Ta'ala. Second, the second is, 
tawakkul putting our trust in him while adopting the right resources see so many people have wrong understanding of tawakkul regarding tawakkul we have two wrong understandings and the right ways in between on one side are those those people who say i have put it on allah taala i trust allah and they won't do anything hand on hand i have left it on him now is this what islam has taught us not do anything and say i have left it on allah taala on the other hand are those people who say that it's all in our hands they don't have any concept of leaving on allah they think everything is in our hands so let us look at both of these understandings those people who say that i have left on allah but they don't do anything their action is against the way taught to us by our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith recorded in sunan tirmidhi a bedouin arab he asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah o prophet of allah o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam aqiluha wa tawakkalu should i tie the camel and put my trust in allah or utliquha wa tawakkalu and or should i leave my camel free and put my trust in allah should i tie the camel and put my trust in allah or should i leave the camel free and put my trust in allah so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said aqilha wa tawakkal tie your camel and put your trust in allah now the question asked by that bedouin is very clear he saying i have my trust in allah why should i tie i i trust allah why should i tie so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us the way no tie your camel and put your trust in allah another hadith which is also in sahih al jami recorded in sunan tirmidhi the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh he said that he was asked ala natadawa should i not take medicines this hadith is if i'm not uh, uh, mistaken it's in tabarani but it's with authentic chain of narration graded sahih in sahih al jami the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked ala natadawa should we take medicines the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said nam ya ibadullah tadawa yes o slaves of allah take medicines fa inna allah lam yada dan illa wada lahu shifan because allah has not created any disease but allah has also created its cure so now islam has taught us that have take medicines and there's another hadith with is with authentic chain of narration in sunan tirmidhi our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the example law annakum tawakkaluna ala allah haqqa tawakkulihi if you were to trust allah as you should trust allah la ruzaqtum kama yurzaq at-tayr allah will give you rizq as he gives risk to the birds to the birds taqdu khimasan wa taruhu bitana when the birds leave their homes in the morning their stomachs are empty and when they return their stomach is full so now what do we learn from this the birds do tawakkul as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us but they leave their homes the example which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us is they leave their homes and their stomach is empty when they come back their stomach is full so now there is refutation for this thinking the thinking in which people say that no i have put my trust in allah so i won't do anything some people say well just leave on allah and just go just don't worry about your your this we need to understand that we have been taught to tie the camel so now what you are in a problem think about what can you do to come out of it tie your camel the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us it's a hadith in sahih muslim ihris ala ma yanfauka pay attention to that in which there is benefit from you for you look at that in which there is benefit ihris ala ma yanfauka so we have to see what should i do to come out of this how can i tie my camel how can i what can i do to change the situation as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us igtanim khamsan qabla khamsin use five things before five others come meaning what resources you have available with you use them what do you have what can you do tie your camel but on the other hand there are those people who don't have any concept of tying the camel they say no concept of tawakkul ala allah no concept of putting trust in allah there are some people who say no it's all in our hands what i do i do this i did this i did this i did this what you did depends on allah for success or failure what we do will convert into success or failure depending on what allah wills if allah wants to give cure he can give cure even without medicine allah is capable we are supposed to take medicine because that is sharia we are supposed to tie the camel that is sharia but we have to put our trust in allah do you know my brothers and sisters what is what defeats a person in def- in the tension in difficulty is when a person takes the entire tension himself what is going to happen 
What will happen? Now what will happen? Leave it on Allah. And when we do this, Allah loves it. Do you know tawakkul is an ibadah of the heart? We offer salah, this is ibadah of the body and also the mind. But we find tawakkul is an ibadah of the heart. When a person does tawakkul, you won't find him raising hands or doing sajda. No, tawakkul is an ibadah of the heart. When you leave it on Allah, I have left it on Allah. I put this on Allah Ta'ala. Allah loves this. Allah loves this. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَزْبُهُ Allah says in Surah Talaq, Surah 65, verse 3, that the one who does tawakkul on Allah, who leaves it on Allah, then Allah says, I am enough for him. When we leave it on him, Allah says, I am enough. In Surah Al-Imran, Surah 3, verse 160, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Allah loves those who put their trust in him. Those who do tawakkul, Allah loves them. So what we have to do, see brothers, practically, you in any difficulty, any tension, any problem, so now think, okay, what can I do? I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. But I leave it on Allah. Don't take the tension yourself. What defeats a person is that tension. And for that tension, you leave it on Allah. And Allah loves this. When we leave it on Allah, Allah loves this. See, people, if you tell people, it's got tension, tum lo. You, you take tension for this. You take tension for this. This I'm leaving on you. This I'm leaving on you. It says everything, I should take tension. But the fact is, when we leave on Allah, Allah loves it. In Allah, yuhibbul mutawakkileen. And Allah says, you have left it on me. For huwa hasbuhu. Allah says, now I will be enough for this. Now I will take care of it. You have left on me, I will take care on it, on it, of it. So now my brother, brothers, practically let's think. You have some tension. You thought, okay, what should I do? How should I tie my camel? I did this. I leave it on Allah. Don't take tension yourself. What is going to happen? Leave it on Him. When you leave it on Allah, He is the controller of this universe. For Him, nothing is difficult. So this should be a habit in life. So the second point is tawakkul on Allah and also tying the camel or adopting resources. What was our first point today? Iman. When we have Iman in Allah, we have Allah, we believe in Allah Ta'ala, the creator of this universe, He is there with me and thinking good thoughts about Him. Then this is very big point. This is very big point in the solution of all our problems. Second point is putting our trust in Him but tying the camel. Tawakkul. Third point, believe in taqdeer, destiny. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hadid, Surah 57, verse number 23. Allah says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُسِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَاهَا Whatever difficulty comes on the earth or in your own souls, it is there in the register before it happened. It is there in the register before it happened. وَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ And for Allah this is easy. لِكَيْ لَا تَاسَوْا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ So that you don't feel sad about what has gone from you, what you, what you could not, what has escaped you. You don't despair at what has escaped you, what could not come in your hands. وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا أَتَاكُمْ Nor feel arrogant or do feel elated about that which Allah has bestowed on you. So now what do we see in this? Belief in taqdeer. Do you know, before the heavens and the earth were created, 50,000 years before that, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the first thing Allah Rabbul Alameen created was the pen and said to it, Uktub, write. The pen said, what should I write? Allah says, said everything that's going to happen, everything that's going to happen, write it down. And the pen wrote down everything that was going to happen. Now some problem happens to us, so people say, oh, if I would have not done, done this, this would have not happened. If I would have not done this, this would have not happened. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us in a hadith recorded in Sahih Muslim. He said, Pay attention to that in which there is benefit for you. Billah, Ask Allah's help. And don't feel defeated. If then something happens to you, something unexpected happened. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَانَا كَذَا وَكَذَا Don't say, if I would have done this, this would have not happened. Don't say that. If I would have done this, if only I would have done this, if only I would have done this, this would have not happened. Don't say that. فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحُ عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ Because that if opens the door for shaitan. So now what should we do? We should not say, if I would have done this. No. It was decreed. 
what was going to happen? It was written in that book, the register, which is in Lohe Mahfuz, 50,000 years before the universe was created. Everything was written down over there. Rufiyat al-Aqlam wa Jufat al-Suhuf. The pens have been raised and the parchments have dried. It's all recorded. It's not going to change now. So now my brothers and sisters, this really takes off a lot of tension. It's there in destiny. Now about destiny also, there are two extreme views and the right way is in between. On one side are those people who deny destiny. They say, no, what is this destiny? They say, what is this? If Allah knows if it's all recorded, if it's there in destiny, then what's the use of us doing anything about it? This can be answered with simple two questions. Two simple questions, you can also solve it, inshallah. Whenever you saw, hear someone say this, ask the question, that the Lord in which you believe, you believe in God, in Allah Ta'ala, the Lord whom you believe in, does He know everything that's going to happen? Or does He come to know things after they happen? He comes to know, okay, huh, this has happened now. Now this has happened, this news has come, this has happened. Does He come to know after it happens? Or does He know about it before it happens? So the normal answer is, I believe in a Lord who knows everything before it has happened. So we say, Allah knows everything. And he knows with, with such yaqeen, with such surety, that it's written down. It's written down. Allah's ilm is not like the ilm of anyone else. So many people, they say something, say, can you write this down? They say, no, I can't write it down. But I'm telling you. So they can tell, but they're not so sure about it that they can write down. But Allah Rabbul Alameen knows everything that's going to happen. And he knows with such yaqeen that it's written down. So, we have belief in Allah's ilm. So, if someone says that no destiny, we say, do you believe in a Lord who doesn't know, who comes to know after it happens? No, no, that's a simple answer. So, that's one extreme, people who deny destiny. That's part of one of the six pillars of Iman. Belief, yaqeen in destiny. Iman in, in Qadr, the sixth pillar. In khairihi wa sharihi, the good and the bad in it. We believe in it. On the other hand, are those people who say that, it's all in destiny, so now there's no use doing anything about it. On one side are those people who deny destiny, on the other hand, there are those people who say, it's all in destiny, there's no use doing anything about it. And actually these two are very similar and very close, even though they look different, but they're actually close. The right way is, if we believe Allah knows everything, it's there in destiny, and that is our iman. If something has happened, there is no way we could have stopped it from happening. There is no way we can stop it from happening. This is very important. So when someone tells you, oh, if you would have done this, this would have not happened. So we should stop that person. We should say, no, don't say this. Rather you tell me, what should I do now? See, imagine a person is in difficulty. In that situation, when he should be thinking, what should I do to come out of it? When he starts thinking, if I would have done this, this would have not happened. So he's getting defeated. His energy is being lost. The energy which should have been focused on finding the way out and finding the way ahead, that energy is gone in. If, فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ تَفْتَحُ عَمَلَ shaitan That if opens the door for shaitan. So don't let anyone open that door for you. If someone says, if you would have done this, we say, no, wait. Tell me, what should I do now? However, I'll point out, Islam is not stopping us from learning lessons. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَا يُلْدَغُ الْمُؤْمِنْ فِي جُهْرٍ وَاحِدٍ مَرَّتَيْنِ a believer is not bit in the same hole twice. So we will learn. I did this mistake. Inshallah, I won't do it again. But don't say, if I would have done this, this would have not happened. That if will open the door for shaitan. I have repeated this four five times so that this becomes part of our thinking. My dear brothers and sisters, let's repeat before we go on to the fourth point. The first point was Iman in Allah. It takes away the problems. It will give a hayat on tayyiba. Second point is tawakkul, the ibadah of the Heart. But the correct concept about tawakkul, which is after, while tying the camel, put your trust in Allah. Adopt both the things. Adopt the resources and put your trust in Allah. Point number two. Point number three is, what's the point? Third point? Belief in qadr, destiny. Huh? Belief in taqdeer. It is there in taqdeer. It takes away the tension. Suppose there's a cyclone. Your house is, something is affected. Allah preserves us in this world. But someone is affected. Someone's death, accident, economic crisis, any problem, it's there in taqdeer. Do you know once it happened that during uh, our recording, we were recording in one place, 
and we had the staff working for, for our Islamic TV channel. Four hours they worked at a length to get everything ready so that it can start. And the moment we started, at that time the power went away. There was a power failure and it, the power didn't come entire night. And they said, what is this? I said, this was decreed 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth was created. It was their destiny that the power is going to go at this time. So now don't say if, if this was there. Now you think about what we can do now. So now we can't do recording tonight. Let's think about something tomorrow. So this is point number three. Now we come to point number four. Point number four is belief in Akhira. My dear brothers and sisters, this life has problems. For a person who wants or doesn't want, who likes it or doesn't like it. Now when we have belief in Akhira, it really takes away a lot of tension. See, for example, someone is, has suffered some loss in this world. And if, it, if this dunya is everything, then this is a matter of, of grief. This is a matter to be sad. This is something to be depressed for him. If this dunya is everything. But when we have the concept of Akhira, it takes away the tension. Do you know why? The Prophet said, Ajab al amril mu'min. How strange is the matter of the believer. And he said in Asabatu Sarra, Shakara Fakana Khaira Lahu, if good comes to him, he does shukr, it's good, better for him, it's good for him. Wa in Asabatu Darra, Sabra Fakana Khaira Lahu, if difficulty or trials or problems come to him, he does sabr, even that is good for him. See, so many people, they say, how bad it was for him. And you know, when they go for consoling someone after an accident, or they go for consoling someone for someone's death, or they go for consoling someone when he's sick, say, so bad. It's not bad. You know what the Prophet ﷺ used to say when he would visit, visit sick people? When he would visit sick people, what would the Prophet say? What would he say? La basa tahuran inshallah. La basa means no problem. Tahuran inshallah, sins will be forgiven inshallah. So the Prophet ﷺ say, would say, la basa, no problem. It's no problem. And people say, it's so, such a big problem. But Prophet ﷺ say, would say, no problem. Do you know why? If this dunya is everything, then there are so many people. Some people are handicapped. Some people, they suffer with poverty, with difficulties. Someone is blind. Now what about him? Even this is good. Do you know how? See, the Prophet ﷺ taught us, he said, if Allah tests someone by taking away two of his precious things, beloved things, there is no recompensation for him. If he has sabr over it, there is no recompensation for him other than Jannah. Now when this life is there, then he's blind. So sad, he's blind. But because of being blind, he is going to go to Jannah because of this one thing. He's going to go to Jannah. Now we see, in this world, there are different types of situations. Someone is rich, someone is poor, someone is famous, someone is not, someone is strong, someone is weak. They, Allah is testing us with different physical circumstances, some different circumstances in our life. But when we look at Akhira, this life and the everlasting Akhira, so then things are different. For example, I'll just give you an example. Suppose there's someone who's going to go to Jahannam. His sins are more, his good deeds are less. Do you know, as the Prophet said, it's recorded in Sunan Tirmidhi with authentic chain of narration, you adhabu nasun min ahli tawheed fin nar. Some people of Tawheed, they are going to be punished in the fire of hell. Hatta yakunu fiha humaman. Until they become like charcoal. Thumma tudrikhumur rahma fa yukhrajun. Then they will find the mercy of Allah and they will be removed. Now why they are going to go to Jahannam and suffer over there so much that they are going to become like charcoal? It's because they didn't have good deeds, enough good deeds. They had more sins. So there are so many people who have more sins. They are going to go to Jahannam. Because fama man thakulat mawazinu. He whose scale of good deeds is heavy. He's going to go in ultimate happiness. But he whose scale is light, his good deeds are scale is light, then he's going to go to Jahannam. Nothing else is going to work over there. Now, this person who was going to go to Jahannam, he has an accident. And he suffers. And he does sabr. And the Prophet said, he said that a believer when he does sabr, his sins they fall down like the leaves fall down from a tree until he walks on earth without any sin on him. So now this person, he has sins, he's going to go to Jahannam. If he dies at that point in life, he's going to go to Jahannam. Then he has an accident, he does sabr, he gets reward of doing sabr, his sins are also forgiven and his good deeds become heavy and his bad deeds are lesser and then he dies and now he's going to go to Jannah. And we say, so sad, 
it was so bad for you is it bad or not we don't know we know that we believe in akhira and whatever happens for a believer it's only good it's only good so this is point number 4 belief in akhira and i'll tell you two hadiths before we go ahead a hadith recorded in sunan tirmidhi the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man kanat al man kanat al akhiratu hamahu whoever is worried about the akhira he is worried about his akhira what's going to happen with me on the day of judgment what's going to happen to to me when i see my scale being weighed what's going to be my state in the grave what's going to be my state on that day of terror what's going to be my, my state on the on the pul sirat how am i going to do what am i going to do how is it going to be near the hawz so he's worried about his akhira man kana til akhira to hamma he's worried about his akhira no one is going to help you yo ma yafirul maru min akhi he is going to a person is going to run away from his brother his brother my brother my brother he is running away from me wa ummihi wa bi his mother his father no one is looking for him no one is going to help him what is going to happen to me on that day man kanat al akhiratu hamma who was worried about his akhira jaal allah ginahu fi qalbi for such a person allah says that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah will create wealth in his heart he will be wealthy hearted jaal allah ginahu fi qalbi wa jamalahu shamlahu and allah will organize matters for him wa atathu dunya wa hiya raghima and the dunya will also come to him the dunya will also come to him while being humiliated raghima raghama yargamo means like rubbing the nose in the dust so the dunya will come to him while being humiliated three things will happen to him if he is worried about about the akhira if he is worried about the akhira three things will happen to him number 1 allah will create wealth in his heart number 2 allah will organize matters for him Number three, dunya will come to him while being humiliated. Wa man kana ti dunya hamma hu, but whoever is worried about the dunya, only worried about dunya, dunya, dunya. Even when they do dua to Allah, Allah give me this, Allah give me this. Rabb na ati na fi dunya hasana. Only think dunya. So there are some people who, for them, everything is dunya. They only think about dunya. This is everything for them. So man kana ti dunya hamma hu, whoever is only worried about his dunya. جعل الله فقره بين عيني. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Allah will create, will put His poverty in front of His eyes. He will see poverty in front of His eyes. Wherever He'll see, He'll see, He'll, he'll feel that I'm going to become poor. Whatever I has is going to have is going to go away. My money is going to go away. My car is going to go away. My this is going to go away. Everything poverty before His eyes. وفرق عليه شمله. Allah says, Allah will scatter His matters for Him. وما يُتِيهِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَا قُدِّرَ لَهُ and he is given only that much of the dunya as was there in his destiny. So my dear brothers, we should be worried about akhira. And do you know sometimes when we have severe pain, there's something called a painkiller. Whether you drink, have a painkiller tablet or you have a injection. Now there is a painkiller for immediate pain relief. If ever it happens with you that you are in very great grief, very great trouble, so there's a formula given by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as is recorded in by imam tabrani and uh, authenticated in sahih al jami the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said that he said that aktsar dhikra hadim al lazat frequently remember the destroyer of desires the destroyer of desires frequently remember what is the destroyer of desires death frequently remember He says, he said, "Fama zakarahu abdun qat," because whenever a slave remembers his death, "Fama zakarahu abdun qat," wa huwa fi diqin, and he is in difficulty. Illa wasahu alay. Allah will create ease for him. Whenever we remember death and we are in difficulty, Illa wasahu alay. Allah will create ease for him. Wa ma zakarahu wa huwa fi saatin illa doyi kahu alay, and he remembers death while being in great ease. He remembers death; it will create some tightness for him. So, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us, if you are in great difficulty and you remember death, then what will happen? Illa wasa huwale, you feel some ease. So now, if we are in difficulty, remember death. What will happen? We will remember that. Okay, this is for some days. I'm going to go from you. This is temporary. I'm going to go from you. Now it becomes easier to fight. Illa wasa huwale, it becomes easier. So our point number four is akhira, because fact is those people who have dunya as everything, they really live troubled lives. They live troubled lives. You will see people who die every day. They live very horrible lives. People who have only dunya as everything, frustrated lives. 
trying to get enjoy it and yet not enjoying it this life is is really treacherous for them but if you have faith in akhira then allah creates that wealth in the heart that sukoon is felt and dunya also comes while being humiliated so there are four points we've seen so far number one was iman number two tawakkul ha huh? see when you are part of a session and you carry this with you it will help you inshallah because when troubles come so you can't go looking for a book or finding some notes or downloading some lecture you should know how should i deal with this inshallah first point iman number two tawakkul number three without looking in your this i want from your memory ha huh? number three belief in taqdeer belief in destiny good and bad it's decided and decreed number four ha huh? belief in akhirah number five now point number 5 to 9 these are generally connected with actions point number 1 to 4 was generally connected with the heart but point number 5 to 9 they are connected with the actions of the body so point number 5 is good deeds because good deeds when we do good deeds so what happens it's part of getting hayatun tayyiba i read out a verse for you in the beginning surah 16 verse 97 as allah says as a, in the quran wa may yamal min as-salihati whoever does good deeds min zakarina unsa with a male or female wa huwa mu'min provided he is a believer fala nuhiya nahu hayatan tayyiba i shall give him a hayatan tayyiba very beautiful life so my dear brothers and sisters if you feel there are lot of troubles on you you feel ever feel that i've got lot of problems look at yourself whether you have sufficient good deeds because if you have if you have good deeds you get hayatan tayyiba you get that beautiful life so we should fill our life with good deeds and do you know sins is a haq fi nafsi ka shay'in since they poke on the heart this the sins they cause a black dot on the heart as recorded in the hadith of sahih bukhari and since they they poke on the heart so we find that good deeds is what brings sukoon in life we should fill our lives with good deeds we should do tauba from sins and that tauba is also source of getting the help of allah and getting that sukoon so point number 5 is filling a life with good deeds generally fill up, fill it up with good deeds So when a person has problems he has to he has to look and check himself. Ke what good deeds do I have in my life? Hmm? What good deeds am I into sins? Because when a person is into sins sins take away his sukoon. You know the hadith the famous hadith that kanat nuqtatun sadaa'u fi qalbi. Inna al-abda idha adnaba when a person does sins a black dot comes on his heart. And another sin another black dot black dot black dot until the whole heart becomes black. Do you know the whole heart becomes black? Now, how can this heart get sukoon? How can this heart get sukoon? And do you know we don't have X-ray machines which can show you check up and how this heart is so 50% black, 30% black, 100% black, totally sealed. We don't have such machines there, isn't it? So the heart, what happens to the heart? It becomes black. So, my dear brothers and sisters, very important for us is that we should do tawbah from sins. Whenever you're feeling difficulty, check: Am I doing sins? am i good doing good deeds because if we do good deeds hayatan tayyiba there is the happy life for that person who does good deeds and has iman so this is our point number 5 point number 6 now among good deeds there is one particular good deed which is specially geared to solve problems and allah has told us in the quran in surah baqarah surah 2 was 153 wastainu bis sabri was salah seek help through sabr and salah in allah ma sabrin allah is with those who do sabr so we should seek help through sabr and salah now salah is the action this is point number 6 salah we know about our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana idha hadabahu amrun salla when something would trouble him he would offer salah do you know our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he also went through a lot of trials difficulties things would trouble him also he would also feel troubled and when he would feel trouble then he would salla of salah but do you know what happens with people when they feel troubled something opposite so many people when you ask them why don't you come for salah they say i have so many tensions so many problems i can't come on the contrary when the people are in tension they should be offering more salah kana nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam idha hadabu amrun salla when he would be in troubles he would pray which salah extra nawafil we should pray because salah the salah has this thing in it it can solve our problems as salah 
So we should take care of our farayas, we should offer some nawafil extra for getting help of Allah Ta'ala. For getting help of Allah and solving our problems. But what happens with people? Instead of getting that extra nafil, we have people who leave their farayas. It's like shaitan at the time when you need it more, when you needed more weapons, he takes away the basic defense also of that person. He's in that situation. So this is point number six, salah. Now let us also know that salah, different different people pray salah, but salah becomes solution when it has khushu. Because there are so many people who pray salah, their bodies are praying salah, their hearts are not there in it. And how we are having a session on 10 points on fighting worry and grief and stress, we should have, we should look at the formulas given in the Quran and the Sunnah, how to get khushu. For example, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Swalli salatan muwaddain, pray the farewell, farewell prayer. When you offer salah, you should think this is your last salah. And when we think this is the last salah, so then what will happen? You can concentrate much better. If you think this is my last salah, then what will happen? It really creates khushu. For example, when we offer salah, we should also pay attention to what we are saying. We should know the meaning first of all. I am saying, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. So we should know the meaning. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah heard those. Allah hears those who praise Him. Now when we read it while knowing the meaning, it really helps us to get khushu. And that khushu is what really helps a person to overcome his problems. So my point number six is salah. Generally salah helps and especially the better the salah, the better the solution. Point number six. Point number seven. Psychologists and psychiatrists, they tell us, say when you get tension, when you are in problem, you find someone who is a good listener. Who maybe listens more and he talks a little less. He's a good listener. And you tell him your problems. But whoever you tell, he has his own problems. He has his own problems. And there are cases where people tell that, I told so and so my problem and he used that information against me. Later, he used it against me. There are people who even find ways of troubling a person by that information. Now, who is the one whom we can tell our problems at any time? Who is the one whom we can talk to at any time? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you, you are in tension in the middle of the night. Whom do you call? But you can talk to Allah at any time. So our point number seven is, which is our point number seven? Dua. And we have so many duas in the Quran and the Sunnah. We have Yaqub alayhi salam who is doing dua to Allah. We have Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. He taught us the beautiful dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hammi wal huzni. Oh Allah, I seek your refuge from worry and grief. Wal ajzi wal ghasli from helplessness and laziness. Wal bukhli wal jubni, from miserliness and cowardice. Wa dal iddaini wa ghalabati rijal. And that people, they come and, dal that my debts, they come and overpower me. I'm overpowered by my debts. Wa ghalabati rijal, and that people come and overpower me. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sought refuge from these eight things. Now my brothers, doing dua, there are so many duas which our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us which are connected to difficulties. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Bi Rahmatika Astaghir. O one, the one who is Hayyu, living. O Qayyum, the one who is self-established. Bi Rahmatika, by your mercy, Astaghir, you, you help me. So now, asking Allah Ta'ala for his help. You can ask in your own words, you can read the duas taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we can tell Allah about our problems. Oh Allah, I have this problem. Oh Allah, I have this problem. So we can tell Allah Ta'ala, and Allah is the one who's here, who's, who knows, who listens, who knows, who listens, who's all powerful, who's all powerful, who can solve our problems. It's not difficult for him at all. So my dear brothers, doing dua and doing dua with yaqeen, with, with yaqeen, with belief. So many people, they lack this. They say, I'm, I'll just try and see. I'll ask Allah, I'll just try. Allah doesn't give, but I'll try and see. If we think that about Allah, that he won't give, he doesn't give, he won't give. Because the fact is, we should have good assumptions about him. We should ask, Udullaha wantu muqinuna bil ijabati. Ask Allah with the yaqeen that Allah will give me. So with that yaqeen, we should do dua to Allah. So this is point number seven. Huh? Point number seven, which is dua. And my dear brothers, how, how many duas is a person allowed to do in a day? Huh? One day, how many, how many you can tell? Huh? Unlimited. 
whether the problem is small or big. If we don't have for small problems, we'll go to so and so. For big problems, we go to Allah. So whether the problem is small, many times these small problems become big. Whether the problem is small or whether the problem is big. We have one Lord who, who says, Ud'oni astajib lakum. Ask me, I will answer your prayers. So my dear brothers, we should do dua to Allah and whether a person is allowed to do dua when he is not facing Qibla. If you are not facing Qibla, are you allowed to do dua? Hmm? Yes, we can do dua. If we face the Qibla, it's better. But if we don't face the Qibla, we are, you are walking on the street and you got tension. No problem, you can do dua to Allah anytime. We can talk to Allah anytime. We can ask Allah as much as we want. He is our Lord. But remember, don't ask only about dunya. When you ask something about dunya, also ask something about akhirah. This is also important. So we have looked at seven solutions. Point number one, Iman. Point number two, Tawakkul. Let's repeat. Point number one, Iman. Point number two, Tawakkul. Point number three, Taqdeer, belief in destiny. Point number four, Akhirah. Huh? Akhirah. Point number five, good deeds. Generally good deeds. And doing Tawbah from sins. Point number six, Salah. Specially geared up for solving problems. Point number seven, Dua. Doing Dua to Allah Ta'ala. Point number eight, Zikr. My dear brothers, do you know so many of these problems when they come, a person is continuously thinking about his problems. Many a times people take wrong solutions. Some people they say, I listen to music, Audhu Billah. Music doesn't take away problems. Do you know alcohol? When a person has alcohol, he says, Sharaab pike, bhul jao. But when he gets his senses back, his problem has increased. Similarly, music takes a person to cloud seven. Yes. But you get back your senses, your problems have increased. Music is like intoxication in this part. So we find that it is the voice of shaitan and the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, In this ummah there will be people who will be, who will, uh, who will sink into the earth. Khasfun wa maskhun, their faces will change. Wa qadafun, qadafun, there will be, there will be rain of stones on them. The sahaba asked, ya Rasulullah, when is this going to happen, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Ida zuhratil qaynat wal ma'azif. When qaynat, female singers become common, and musical instruments become common, with the shuribatil khumur and the drink of, drinking of alcohol becomes common. Fi hadil ummah, in this ummah, when in, in this ummah, among Muslims, when these three things happen, so three types of punishment will start coming. This is authentic, authentic hadith in Tirmidhi. So now, what do we do? We do zikr. Let your tongue be zikr. Allah bi zikr illahi tatma'inul qulub. Indeed, in the zikr of Allah, hearts get sukoon, satisfaction. Surah Rad, Surah 13, verse 28. So we should make our tongues busy in zikr. Now, whatever azkar you know, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, the best, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. You read whatever you know, as much you know, just keep reading, get the tongue busy. Allah Mansurni, Allah, oh Allah, help me. And ask Allah for help and do zikr. And this helps in a very big way. It gives positive thinking. It gives a cone to the heart. And that is needed. We don't have to take that tranquilizer. We have to do zikr of Allah. And you get the sukoon of the heart that will make you feel very much in, in control of the situation with the help of Allah. So that's point number eight. Point number one was Iman. Point number two is Tawakkul. Point number three is Belief in Taqdeer. Point number four is Akhirah. If this dunya is everything, then you are going to be troubled. Dunya and Akhirah. Akhirah. Point number five is Good deeds. Generally good deeds and toba from sins. Point number six is Salah. Very important. Salah. Point number seven is Dua. As much as you want. Your Lord is there for you. Point number eight is Zikr. Point number nine. And maybe someone is going to tell me that point number nine, I am troubled and you are telling me this. Someone may say this. But this is there from the Quran and the Sunnah. Point number nine is when you are troubled, you are in difficulty, help someone. Help someone. The person will say, I'm troubled, I should go and help someone. Yes, help someone. We have authentic hadith about this. The Prophet said, Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamku man fi sama. Have mercy on those on earth. The one above the skies will have mercy on you. So you have mercy on those on earth. You're in difficulty. So, so many people teach, you give sadaqa. Now when you give sadaqa, you're helping someone. And when you help someone, Allah will help us. The Prophet said, he said that, do you know, what is the most beloved deed? Sururun tudkhiluhu ala Muslim. Making a Muslim happy. Or taqdi an hudain. Or paying his debt. Or tatrudu an hujoo. Or solving his, his hunger. 
make him happy, make someone happy, just give something to someone, Allah loves us, you have mercy on, our, on those on earth, the one above the skies will have mercy on us. So point number nine is, when you are troubled and in difficulty, looks for, can I see someone who is troubled? Even if you give him a smile, even if you give him some good advice, even if you try to help him in whatever way you can, some good word to someone, show him some good way that see so and so can help you maybe. If you help someone, Allah will help us. This is point number 9. Point number 10. And this point number 10 is about people. People, so many times we get tension, difficulty, stress, problems, worry due to people. Now how to deal with people, how to get a grip over the situation. So I want to share with you a formula which is called grip. The formula is grip. It will be spelling grip as G-R-E-P. Even though the right spelling is G-R-I-P, we will spell it as G-R-E-P. Now why am I giving you a formula? So that you can remember these four points. Which are there in this point number 10. Dealing with people. If someone is troubling you, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's your employee, maybe it's your competitor, maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your children, maybe it's anyone. Anyone is troubling you and causing you tension. You can get a grip over the situation with this formula given to us in the Quran and the Sunnah. Point number one, G. G is for good. Look at that person. Can you see something good in him? Look at him again. You know something bad in him, he's troubling you, but is there something good in him? Look for something good in him. The Prophet sallallahu taught us, it's a hadith recorded in Sahih Muslim, La yafrak mu'minun mu'minatan. A believing man should not hate a believing woman. فَإِنْ كَرِهَا مِنْهَا خُلُقًا رُضِيَا مِنْهَا أَقْرَ If something in her is, he dislikes something in her, there will be something else in her which he will like. This is for a husband looking at his wife. Now if somebody says, I don't like her. No, a believing man should not hate a believing woman. If he doesn't like something, there will be something else which he will like. Now this teaches us the attitude in life. So when we look at people, and especially when there is someone who whom, who's troubling you, Look at him again. Is there something else you like in him? Do you know my brothers? So many times when we see this good thing, it helps us to be very objective. It helps us to be good with him. And when you see that good thing, goodness in him and you behave with him accordingly, that good part will dominate. He has good and he has bad. If we look at the good in him and we treat him in that manner, maybe his good will dominate and he will be good with us. So the first point is looking at the good in that person. G. Number two, R. GR. R is from a verse of the Quran, Surah Fusilat, Surah 41, verse number 34. Allah Rabbul Alameen has taught us, Idfa billati hiya ahsan. Repel evil with good. Someone does evil to you, don't just leave it. Repel it. Give a fitting reply with good. Repel evil with good. So now someone did bad to us, don't leave him now. Now you have to give a fitting reply. With good. Be the first one to smile. Be the first one to say salam. Give some gift to him. Tahadu tahabao. Give gifts. Love will be created. Send some, some good food has been cooked in your house and you had a fight with your neighbor. Send it to him. Take him out for tea. Repel evil with good. Do dua for him. This is also something very good. Do dua for him. Forgive him. This is also something good. Repel evil with good. فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ أَدَعْوَةٌ Then he between whom and you is enmity, كَانَّهُ وَلِيٌ hamim will become like close and intimate friends. Enemy will become friend. Close and intimate friends. وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا But this doesn't happen except with those who have sabr. وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَزُّ نَزِيمَ This doesn't happen except with those who receive a great deal of good. So my dear brothers, though this is tough on the, on the nafs, it's tough on our ego to repel evil with good. He did bad to me. I should do good to him. Do you know people think that this is humiliating? People think that I should do good and he'll do bad to me. But Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Man tawaza lillah illa rafaqullah. Whoever makes himself humble for Allah's sake, Allah will raise him high. You become, make yourself humble for Allah's sake, Allah will make us high. And Allah loves it. And Allah does that with us then. Whatever you forgive someone, Allah loves this. Then Allah will forgive us. So this is point number two. Point number one in dealing with people is G is for good. Look at the good in him. Is there something good in him? Maybe this can you can apply this formula on your wife if you've had a fight with her, or some sister can apply on her husband. 
Is there something good in him? Look at the good in him. Number two is, repel that bad thing with good. Okay? Number three, E. E is for expectation. We are spelling G-R-E-P. Expectation. Don't have expectation from people. Do you know so many people, if you listen to their story, you t catch a person on the street, say, tell me your story. Now, in his story, somewhere it will come that I do good with people and they do bad with me. Generally, people have this feeling. I am doing good with people and they do bad with me. And so many people, they say, I used to do good to him, good to him, good, good, good. I used to do good, good, good. Then I saw, what's the use? What's the benefit? So I stopped doing good. But the fact is that we have not really seen the benefit and harm. That we will see on the day of judgment. We have not seen. So the fact is that, why this problem? Why is it that we, we have this problem? Why is this pain? Do you know so many people? Parents, they say, I did so much for this child. See, I did this, this, this. So many people say that uh, this friend, I helped him and he was in difficulty. I did this with, for him. I did this for him. I did this for him. This neighbor, I have cooked so much food and sent to that neighbor. But then in the ending, when you don't get good in return, so we feel disappointed. We feel sad and it causes pain. So how to overcome this pain is by not having any, any expectation from them. Have expectation from Allah. If you have expectation, you will have disappointment. If you don't have expectation, there is no disappointment. So, we should do good for whose sake? For the sake of Allah. And when we do good for the sake of Allah, there is no disappointment. I am doing good for Allah's sake. I am not expecting also from Him. Do you know it's taught in the Quran and Surah Insan. Allah has told us that there are people, Yut imuna taam, they feed food. Allah hubi, for the love of Allah. Miskeen wa yatima wa asira. To the miskeen, the poor, the orphan, and to the captive. And they say, Inna ma nutimukum li wajhillah. We feed you for the pleasure of Allah. La nuridu minkum jazam wa la shukura. We don't want anything in return from you. We don't even want shukura. Thank you from you. As people say, now, what kind of person is he? He didn't even say thank you. So these people say, I don't even want that thank you from you. Wala shukura. We are doing it for liwa jhilla. My dear brothers and sisters, anything we do, if we say, I am doing this for Allah, then there is no disappointment. And that disappointment is a cause of worry, cause of tension, cause of pain in the heart. But if you don't have expectation from people, then there won't be disappointment. So now, person will say, I am good with my wife. Why? For Allah. Wife is good with her husband. For whom? For Allah. Person is good to his children. For whose sake? For Allah's sake. Children are good to their parents. For Allah's sake. Everyone for Allah, then you can be good for a long time. If we are good for people, then we are going to be disappointed. Because most people are ungrateful. Allah says, very few of my slaves are grateful. They are ungrateful to Allah. They get so many favors from Allah and they say, what has Allah given us? Most of the people, they say, what has Allah given us? But the fact is that Allah gives so much we can't even count. So what is good for us is, we don't have expectation from people. Have expectation from Allah. G-R-E and the last point of this program is P. And that P is very important. Because so many people are very troubled with the treachery. They say he is making what plans. I don't know what he is thinking. What are they planning? He is after me. He has some treachery in his heart. So Allah has taught us something. And this is this verse is so beautiful. It's in Surah Al Imran, Surah 3, verse 120. Allah says, wa taqu. If you have sabra and you have taqwa, la yadurukum kaiduhum shayya. All their qaid, all their treachery, all their planning, they won't cause any harm to you. And do you know this verse is about the treachery of the Jews and the Christians? Huh? About the Jews generally. That they are, they are treachery. La yadurrukum. It will not cause any harm to you. As so, so many people say that Jews are planning these things. Freemasons are planning this thing, this thing. in tasbiru. If you have sabr. Wa tattaku. You have taqwa. La yadurrukum kaiduhum shay'a. They are treachery. Their planning is not going to cause any harm to you. And Allah says in Surah Fatir, Surah 35, verse 43, وَلَا يَحِيقُ الْمَكْرُ السَّيْنِيُّ إِلَّا بِأَهْلِي The evil plan doesn't encompass anyone except the one who made it. The one who made the evil plan, you throw a ball up, it will come down. So the one who made that evil plan, he's the one who's stuck in it. 
So point number four is don't let the evil planning worry you. Wa ma karu wa ma kar Allah. They plan, Allah also plans. Wallahu khairul makreen. Allah is the best of best of the planners. So my my brothers and sisters, leaving on Allah Taala and having sabr and taqwa. This is the part fourth part of people. The people problem. G, do good. R, repel evil with good. E, don't have expectations from people. P, have uh, planning about their planning. Leave it to Allah Taala. Don't worry about that planning. Now, my brothers and sisters, we have seen ten points. Let's quickly revise once and finish with one verse from the Quran. First point, iman. Number two, tawakkul. Leave it on Allah. Leave it on Allah. Habit. Make it a habit in life. I leave it on Allah. Allah loves this. Number three is takdir. Belief in destiny. Number four is belief in akhira. This life is everything. Then you will be troubled. But akhira is there. And that is where the real recompensation is. Point number five, amal, good deeds. Point number six is salah. Point number seven is dua. Point number eight, zikr. Point number nine, helping people. You are in trouble. Help people. Point number ten is dealing with people. We have a solution called grip. G R E P G for look at the good in that person. R is repel evil with good. E is don't have expectations for him. P is all the planning, leave it on Allah Taala. Finally, we wait for the day, my dear brothers and sisters. We when we get to hear from Allah Taala from in the Akhira. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutmainna. O soul, who is mutmain, who is satisfied, who is in tranquility, and this is the soul of the believer. Where in this dunya also he lives with sukun, in the Akhira also there is success. And if we don't have Islam, we don't follow the principles given in the Quran and Sunnah. We are troubled in this dunya and troubled in the Akhirah. Both the sides are troubled. So I'll end with the verse from Surah Hajj, Surah 22, verse 11. Allah says, "Women are nasi, and from among people, man yabudullah, there are people who worship Allah, Allah harf, on the condition. From among people, there are some people who worship Allah, but on a condition, Allah harf, Allah harf, imana Allah shart." What is the condition they have? In asabahu khairun atman nabi. If good comes to them, they are happy. Wain asabahu shadrun. In wain asabathu fitnatun. If trials come to them, in kalaba ala wajhi, they turn their face and they go away. Khasirat dunya, they lose the dunya. Wal akhirah, they lose the akhirah. If we live steadfast, we get success of dunya and akhirah. If we lose this, khasirat dunya wal akhirah. We lose this dunya and we lose akhirah. May Allah keep us because of those who are successful in this dunya and in the akhirah. Amin wa akhirah. Dawana and alhamdulillah.